they sit down at Cadillac Jacks, okay? And uh, this is when Teresha shares how uh, Billy passed his, uh, apparently his liver shit out on him. Mm-hmm. It was not his liver. <laughs> and for you to try to paint the war veteran as somebody coping with post-traumatic stress disorder by trying to find the bottom of a bottle is disgusting. Uh, his kidneys were bad. He did not have cirrhosis. You have cirrhosis. How dare you? Hi, hello, and welcome to another brand spanking new episode of Bad TV. My name is Dylan. I'm saddled up next to one Patrick Hickey. Great to be here. It is so good to be here because what are we covering? The Golden Bachelor, Dylan. Our favorite show. It's a juggernaut. It is a juggernaut. I have a newfound respect and love for this series. I wouldn't go that far. Okay. But um, my gosh, it is episode two. I think that we are smitten. Pierced by Cupid's arrow. We are absolutely head over heels in love with this show. Now, I don't want to be a negative uh, ninny poo or whatever it's called, but um, I think that'll say bad about this show. Well, I just feel like it'll end in three to four episodes. You know, listen, it's ABC, it's quarterback, it's it's the it's Mickey. They're going to piss me off at some point. But right now, let's be present. Let's be in the bliss of what is just a heartwarmingly hilarious television show. Emphasis on heartwarming, Dylan. Yep. They're having fun with it again. I don't know. There's just something magical about it. Perhaps it's that one-hour format. I don't want to be a broken record, Disney, Mickey Mouse, but uh, please, let me make this appeal to you. Dylan and I will cover The Bachelor and Bachelorette if you cut it back to one hour. 100%, Mickey, and come to the negotiating table with us, okay? Now, we don't want to have this long, drawn-out thing that you had with the AMTPPTA and the WGA, because honestly, the strike wouldn't do as much for our cause. It would just be me and Pat outside of Radford with signs that say, make the bachelor one hour shorter, and people would be very confused. So just listen to us now. Let's not get messy. Thank you, Dylan. Cut the show down by an hour like you're doing here. The world will fly by and everyone will enjoy this show the way we're enjoying The Golden Bachelor. Mm. Now, Dale, if you don't mind, uh, can I get a, a some PSVS out of the way? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Patreon, we're wrapping up Love is Blind Season 5. Is it a good season? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Is our recapping hilarious? Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Uh, also, uh, Below Deck, if you're not a fan of Below Deck, but you've heard of the show, it's on Bravo. There's like 18 versions of it. Dylan and I recap that on a podcast. Actually, on this very feed, Bad TV, never mind. Yeah. That was very stupid of me so, to say that. Duh, so fucking very dumb. Very dumb. Yeah. Very dumb. And uh, is there anything else we're plugging here? Well, I don't know. I mean, if you want to, our Below Deck podcast is another Below Deck podcast. We just have a C Rad interview with Natalia, the Thoughty and Readers. Um, a lot of really good stories there. Uh, yeah, patreon.com is where you're going to get a lot of extra content, APS, PMZ, lots of fun stuff, and uncensored uh, episodes of this podcast, which I don't know how tonight's going to go. It's but not going to go well. I feel like we may have some edits because um, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. So if you want to hear the unedited, full throttle, uncensored episode, go to patreon.com slash another podcast network. Let's get into our canes. Okay. Uh May I go first? Yeah, of course. Okay. First off, my only critique of this production of this series is I need the Chirons of the names. Yeah. Okay. I, I have no idea. In past seasons, I'd see Sarah, the dolphin lover. Right. Okay. Uh, that would remind me that this person, Sarah, loves dolphins. Also, her name is her Sarah. Name is Sarah. Uh, you guys aren't helping us out at all with that. Please, Chirons of names. I have, thank God I cheat a little bit, Dylan. I keep a uh, separate phone uh, with the, uh, someone did a nice article of all the, um, the various cast members of this season. Oh, hi, Caleb. Um, we're having swim class at my house today. Uh, Caleb is a, uh, a child who uh, I've never met before. He's a weird little kid. And oh, he is, uh, he is a weird little kid. I mean, he's, uh, he has no idea who we are. And he is, he's over here just staring through that window. Like, uh, quite honestly, like a little freak. I mean, his mom had to come and get him. I mean, I don't like Caleb one bit. No? No. He'll grow on you. Yeah. All right, second thought. We have a competitor out there, um, and we love this. Uh, the gall of that child. I know. It was rude. Okay, the competitor. Was he three? He's four. Okay. He's somewhere around there. Yeah, he should All know right. better. I understand that. Okay, there is a competitor out there uh, called Game of Roses. Well, lots of respect for them. Their <laughs> angle on this show is the strategy of winning it. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, you back yourself into a corner with your little niches over there, because um, 
Patty was asked uh, the strategy of this season. It's a uh, survive Don't die <laughs> before you fall in love yeah. again. So you yeah. can suck at game of roses. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Bad listen, TV rules. Listen, 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 I don't want to start any blood feuds with any other podcasts that are covering the bachelor. I wouldn't call game of roses a competitor at all. They do their own thing and their thing is pouring hundreds of hours of their life into the data and analytics behind the strategy of this show. Are they absolutely insane? Yes. Should they be, institutionalized maybe but they do something that is different and go support them if you like that how Absolutely many canes do you give the fucking show all right excellent episode uh it did not disappoint <clears throat> uh, i give it 100 canes by the way in the comment section <laughs> leave your canes let us know how many canes you think the episode was i i i I want to say a couple of things. One, you're not cheating pulling up an article of all of the... You're not cheating pulling up an article of all these people's names, okay? That's a commitment to the process. I wouldn't say that that's cheating at all. Second, you said they aren't giving you the chirons, mm -hmm. and you said that it was going to knock off some canes, and then you gave it 100 canes. I don't know how that's possible. It, uh, my review did not make sense. I apologize. Uh, apology not accepted. I am absolutely loving this show. I would give it 92 canes because... There is so much heart, as we mentioned. There is so much love. There are so many stories of dead spouses, which are heartwarming and loving. But what this episode had tonight, which is something that we really haven't seen in a while, is uh, danger. That PA <laughs> that picked up that car and apparently did a test drive before he put poor Gary and Teresa in there. Yeah. You should be fired, sir. Can you imagine this show ends with not a bang, but a whimper? Gary and Teresa are dead on the 101 off of Cheeseboro before we even get to see what this show is like. I mean, that PA could have ripped this away from us. I don't want to really spoil it for sad stuff. I, I have a theory that they got the shot they needed of poor Gary and Teresa with their lives in danger. Yeah. And then they sat in the crew van and drove over to that burger spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's no way you let them drive an hour and 15 minutes from sunny uh, Canaan Drive, where yeah. the mansion is, to the to dirge of devil's asshole yeah, in the San, San Fernando, Fernando Valley. Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, can I just a theory. finish oh, uh, my fucking cane? Forgive me. Thank you. But the danger was not only taking place on the 101. Where you take Canaan up, and there's that kind of junction of all the jack in the box and the and gary's like oh i've never seen this many stores <laughs> but the most dangerous thing about this episode was the negligent and life-threatening room and board situation we have we've talked about how falls can kill the elderly ad nauseum and what they're doing to these people is I don't know if the Geneva Convention extends outside of military engagements, but I feel like it's a breach of of morality. Of I don't course. know. It's really fucked up. Well, well, Dylan, that's the top of the show. Are we getting into the show? Let's get into the show right, right the, now. Those wooden gates open of the mansion, and the women just run in there. Mm. I think they were there the night before, but they act like it's a new place. I, well, the, and that's the kind of thing that week four, week five, I'm going to have it with Mickey because miss me with the bullshit. What are we doing? We've been here for 12 hours. Why are they surprised? Well, one thing they're surprised at is those goddamn bunk beds, Dylan. Yeah. I think you're referring to them in mm -hmm. your canes, which means logistics need to be figured out. It appeared every yeah. woman vied for the bottom bunk for a myriad of reasons. You know? Yeah, mainly uh, one. Well, one had <laughs> yeah. a hip replacement, so she can't climb that goddamn ladder. Right, that was An Sandra. Yeah, another one, uh, she needs to be near her medication at night. Yep. And then one of them just openly admitted, hey, I'm old. Things just fall out of my asshole at inopportune times. Didn't happen, you know? wasn't said, never happened. Can you imagine? Can I imagine things falling out of my asshole at any given time? Yeah. Are you talking about, uh, did someone say they had... I'm confused about what you're doing. Are you, are you talking about somebody shitting their pants? Someone said, I might just shit on your face if I sleep above you. That happened. That's a thing. Patty doesn't write those things. <laughs> anyway, the women toast to social security checks and Palmer arrives and we get a Chiron that he's 44. By the way, Palmer, 
You look a whole lot older than that. That's what a case of truly a night will do to your fucking face. Chubby, bloated, <laughs> red. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Well, um, they quarterback walks in and quarterback says something creepy, right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm unbelievably distracted because Pat is pulling up a YouTube video of Doom, the video game Doom. Well, I'm say, come on. Save that. So I... So quarterback walks in and quarterback says, um, ladies, I've got something here for you. And he drops the date card and, um, I can't put her name on it because there was no Chiron. I believe it to be. Are you talking about the scary woman or someone else? No, not the scary woman. Not Kathy. No, I'm not talking about the scary woman. I'm talking about, um. I believe it was the poor woman whose the the memory of her uh, marriage to her Nancy. husband was defiled by the yeah Nancy yeah Nancy says what's that oh yeah she hadn't watched the show and Jesse goes <laughs> Nancy you fucking idiot it's a date card mm. well you know who does know what it is Kathy. Kathy goes over and does the honors of reading the date card. And yeah. I thought it was an interesting uh, clip here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kathy uh, reading the uh, date card. Anyway, she scares me. Don't go spelunking in a cave in the backwoods of West Virginia, because if you do, Kathy will be there. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. Fucked up and brutal. Well, Teresa gets the date card, Dale. This is going to come out late on Saturday because there are going to be so many edits. I, I'm sorry. Sorry to say, but, you know, that's when it's coming out. Um, what is happening next? So, Teresa, the birthday girl, um, oh, yes. is going to be getting the one-on-one. -on -one. And that's when we learn a little bit about Teresa. She was married to a man named Billy, a Vietnam vet, who oh, told her on his man. deathbed, unlike you, that's right. I want you to be happy. I want you to find love after me. Now, Pat, you are a selfish dying lover. That's right. Uh, these are my rules or my stipulations if uh, my wife, uh, if I you know, clock out early. Uh, if you get a new guy, he can't uh, use my stuff. <laughs> no doggy style. That's our thing. Lots of great memories from back there. Uh, only sexual position sanctioned is reverse cowgirl because oh uh, on good authority, I've heard that's a position <laughs> most likely to snap an old man's cock off. Very yeah, brittle yeah. the bones are, Dylan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dill, let's get back to uh, Billy's origin story. He, uh, yeah, I wouldn't he, say it's a bone. It's more like cartilage. And as you age, I think cartilage gets more um, malleable. So I don't think you're... Um, from the death efforts to break the cock of your wife's new lover are going to to, uh, to take. You know, I think that you should just let that go. Mm. Uh, you've had a lot of great memories from back there, and I think that you should find solace in that. Fair enough. Yeah. Back to Billy. Um, he gave it to those commies over there, a little taste of what an M102 howitzer can do. Uh, perhaps Billy fought along your father, Peter. Yeah. Um, and listen... <clears throat> You know, the the people of a government are not the government. You know, Ho Chi Minh was, um, you know, he was an idealist and um, an ideologue. And um, the bodies mowed down under those canopies were nothing but tragic. <clears throat> but with that being said, don't come for our boys. I don't even know what I'm saying right now. I mean, it's shameful that we went over there. Absolutely shameful. Should have left those people alone. Yeah. And, and, and what a beautiful thing that they welcome us with open arms. And we do oh. the same to them. You know? Oh, yes. I love that we've mended that relationship because the Vietnamese people are absolutely beautiful. Wonderful people. Yeah. Well, anyway, Billy's dead. Uh, Gary arrives for his date in that yeah. old car that apparently is malfunctioning because the headlights don't work. Yeah, Gary Bear shows up. He is living in the present. He says, this could be the night we look back on and say, that was when it all happened. 
And what is nature's most powerful aphrodisiac, Pat? Fear, Dylan. Yep. Um, and it's the little things. Because if these two uh, turn into a ball of flames in, at any given minute on that freeway, because mm-hmm. on account of that goddamn segment producer didn't check out the car right. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, this could have been their final minutes. But right now, they are in love. Well, everything about this date is dumb. Uh, the car is a death machine. Uh, the car has no hood. Even if it were to work, the hair is getting fucked up. Even Gary's kind of brittle, gelled old man hair is uh, astray and awry. Um, Teresa, it looks like a jellyfish skydiving at this point. I mean, it's just going everywhere. And that's when we pull off the freeway. She puts her hand on his shoulder and he says, you know, that meant so much to me. He kind of sounds a little bit like, um, yeah, go with me here. If Dr. Phil didn't have the draw and was on a little helium. Yeah. I can get there with you. And I'm sorry for saying that. That didn't need to be said because that's very convoluted, but that's just where my brain's going. She puts a hand on his shoulder. He says, that meant so much to me. And then they pull off the road and they make their way north into San Fernando. Now they drive, if you're not from Los Angeles, or even if you've lived here your entire life, you may have never heard of San Fernando. You've heard of the San Fernando Valley, but not San Fernando, which is a Sodom and Gomorrah kind of hellscape. It's a hellhole. They drive past numerous, numerous condemned tire shops. They are not up to code, and they will haggle with you. Whatever tire you get from those places will pop within two weeks, but you'll get back home on it. Um, This is not the kind of place you want to be with no headlights, but that is where they are sending these two upper in age people but i liked cadillac jacks because that's a little what do they call that these people these uh, progressive they call it genderfication you put a nice little spot in the middle of a fucking horrible area next thing you know starbucks wants to be there man what do you mean these progressives you're a progressive what are you talking about that's true i don't know i was trying to make a hacky joke i'm gonna uh, go to cadillac jacks tomorrow it's only 15 minutes from here you know you hop on that 170 man you're gonna go to cadillac jack yeah yeah a lot of good looking people there and they dance when you eat in the restaurant I can't think of a worse dining experience. People, you know, that was my only issue, and we'll get to it, but I don't know why we're doing Grease 3 at the end of this. I don't don't know why we're doing Grease 3 at the end of this. Grease 2. Well, 2's already happened. Grease 3 there, you know. All right, so this is a trope that I assume production is going to run into the ground which is they can play, have a lot of fun with the various decades that these people are out. You know, the threesomes uh, and the, the key parties yeah, of the yeah, 70s yeah. and the disco era. Of course, we'll get to all the cocaine and the horrible hair in the 80s. They already did yeah. that kind of with the photo shoot. We'll get to the heroin and the oversized flannels of the 90s. Of course. Yep. Uh, I don't even know where we're up to in the 2000s. But anyway, uh, they sit down at Cadillac Jacks, okay? And uh, this is when Teresha shares how... Uh, Billy passed his, uh, apparently his liver shit out on him. Mm -hmm. It was not his liver. (laughs) And for you to try to paint the war veteran as somebody coping with post-traumatic stress disorder by trying to find the bottom of a bottle is disgusting. Uh, His kidneys were bad. He did not have cirrhosis. You have cirrhosis. How dare you? But I was wondering (laughs) what what <laughs> What the fuck does Don't Stop Believing cost to license? Because it's uh, got to be $15. That's why it's everywhere. Because <laughs> there's no reason it should be this auditorily omnipresent. You hear it fucking everywhere. It's ubiquitous. And they wouldn't spend this kind of money to have this segment. If the, I, It just doesn't make any I sense. I think they probably me. paid a little more than 15 bucks. Uh, all right, because it, it was in all the packages of the marketing this song, so I think they they definitely paid out, out the air for this. Yeah. Um. So how we get to that though, Dill is uh, yeah, to bond over loss and loneliness and the need to make yeah. the most of their time left, and then Gary begins saying the phrase "Don't stop believing." Yeah, Gary. And, uh, <sighs> suddenly, uh, "Don't stop believing" by Journey blasts from a jukebox. Yeah. Ironically, Steve Perry, the lead singer of uh journey stopped believing after the band replaced him with a dude from the philippines because he liked the sauce a little too much yep i'd stop believing too i mean that's so random you get a filipino guy in here you're replacing me with a 
Filipino guy? What's going on? He sounds just like him. I've really? seen him twice at the Hollywood Bowl. Wow. You wouldn't know. Close your eyes. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Every now and then I get a... I, I have to... Speaking of eyes, a good segui backwards. When they're talking about um, her drunk husband dying, I was moved to tears because the people on this show outside of that witch Kathy have so much... No, 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 don't. Come on, man. You were saying there's so much heart on this show and I forgot what I was going to say. I mean, I, what was that impression? Was after he slaughtered that? Okay. All right. Um, the show is so incredible because the people on the show have lived. Mm hmm. A long time. And you you can't take that away from them. You can't take that away from them. And what that gives you is a perspective. And it kind of eliminates a vapidness that most of the people on this franchise have. You insert Greg Grippo here. You insert uh, Tyler Cameron, Matt James there. I mean, these Greg people, Grippo's girlfriend, the aunt. She's horrible narcissist horrible. that was here for all the wrong well, reasons. Well, I don't ever want to see Greg Grippo and the aunt talk about really anything. I'd maybe watch a porn of them, but not, yeah, yeah. not fucking he, listen to them talk. But this isn't a porn. This is the Golden Bachelor. Mm -hmm. So everybody is... They're, they're dancing. They're, they're singing. The right it's Grease 3. The the line cook is singing. I mean... That was awesome. Yeah, that was great. And he said, tonight... Uh, Gary says, tonight I felt promise and I felt hope. Let's get back to Malibu. And well, I'm, first he gives her the rose. Oh, he gives her the rose. Excuse me. And then the next day uh, we wake up for the group date day. Yeah. And we have a holdover from the original horrible part of the series. Hate to is, see this. Absolutely fucking hate to see this snake oil salesman. Franco LaCosta. This lame a burned fraud. out, played out bit. So lame. It's a romance novel cover. Is that how you say it? A yeah. romance book cover. Okay. I got a new segment idea. Give Gary a sword and release a hippopotamus on the property and see who he protects. Now that's a good segment right there. Maybe a <laughs> chimpanzee. They eat people. <laughs> I mean, I think both animals loose on the property. And then pipe in don't stop believing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As the hippo kills everyone because a sword's going to do nothing in the hands of Gary. I'm just saying, if you're workshopping new ideas, Franco, uh, oh, the photographer guy? Nah. Nah, I know. No. I got a better idea. Let's probably kill everyone. Well, yeah. I know it's controversial, Dylan, but it is, in fact, <laughs> groundbreaking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, what an insane idea. And, and Mickey says... You know, hey. he, he says, I like it. he says, you know what? That's crazy enough to possibly work. Next thing you know, once again, articles come out before we even take off a hippopotamus kills the golden bachelor. We want to see the show, Pat. You can't pitch ideas like cars with no headlights and hippopotamus loose on the property. I mean, that's absolutely insane. We have to keep it grounded. And unfortunately, Franco will do that for us. We're going to have numerous outfits for the ladies and they are going to be doing a romance novel cover shoot. Those were words. Natasha, that greedy bitch <laughs> took She's the seventies so yeah. outfit. She looked great in it. Oh, but. she looked amazing. I love Natasha. I me too. Now, Leslie is Leslie needs to calm down. Okay, I know you're a hippie, but this means nothing. So don't be pissed off at Natasha for taking the '70s outfit. And what kind of procedure is that? You saw the '70s outfit, yeah. so Natasha can't first have come, it. First come, first serve. Get out of here. Um, so April, Jean, E, and Kathy. So this is the Island of Desire shoot. Yeah, and there was no desire. And also no lighting. These I don't know what these pictures are going to turn into, but uh, well, that's what happens when you get a. Um, I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. Franco is a failed actor and a heroin addict, and it's not good to have this guy on set just taking random pictures with 
natural two o'clock lighting. I mean, I get a golden hour shoot, but even then, I mean, listen, it's just not good. Mm -mm. So Uh, next up, we get the summer love vibe. They rolled right through that one. And then we get road to passion. And that's uh, Mm. Leslie hates that. She's wearing the John Travolta jacket from Greece. But I have to say, uh, they had the best cover. I forget who else, what other uh, lady was in that shoot. Well, regardless of how unhappy Leslie is, she is giving herself permission to feel that way. Good for you. Uh, Here's where we get the tears. Nancy breaks down in tears. She misses her husband, and now she is defiling the memory of that sacred day by uh, participating in this emotionally bankrupt charade with Franco. Now, Gare Bear, the Riz Master, picks up on this, and he goes over, and he chats with her. He asks her, why are you being a poopy pants during the photo shoot? Yeah. And she begins by explaining it's because she loved her husband, and the wedding dress affected her. And then Gary breaks in to share his own story, being reminded of a loved one. Uh, it's when he smelled Cinnabons in a parking lot, and uh, it brought uh, him back to his wife cooking Cinnabons and eating all of them. Oh, uh, she was fat. You're going to do that. <laughs> You're going to say that Gary's late wife <laughs> was fat. <laughs> I mean, this fruit is subterranean. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) You know what this is like? I feel like I'm in. I'm not proud of myself. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like I'm in the Bronco with you, and we're driving down the one on one, and I'm like, I I feel like I'm going to (laughs) get. I mean, it's just nuts. So uh, we have some lovely conversations after Franco uh, leaves to go jam a needle between his toes. And um, he (laughs) begins, well, everywhere else is too scabbed over. He asks the women uh, various different questions. Uh, Do you know where you were at Woodstock? Um, Kathy, you know, we have a meanwhile of lots of media. Oh, yeah. Well, Christina comments. tells Gary she missed uh, Jimi Hendrix set at Woodstock because she was shitting out a kid. Uh, or uh, giving birth, yeah. She did make it to the Crosby Spills Nash encore only because acid kicked in and she was in the right <laughs> mindset. Yeah. Then Gary chats with Kathy, who, if uh, you wanted to know, uh, could. Okay. Let's think about it, though. Let's think about it. Fair enough. Maybe Either. maybe let me do one, and, and we'll see if, if mine can cover Understood. the itch we have you right now. Got it. She plans on being good-looking until she's 100. Okay. And I believe that she can do that because I think that the way that she has stayed, the shape that she is in, is via some kind of bloodlust that she has. I think that she... I, I, I don't think that there's any kind of creature too small or too big that she won't drain of its of its mana. I think that's why she looks the way that she does at 180. She is a, an underworld kind of creature. Oh, and I am yes, not a is. fan of Kathy. Well, you know who I'm a fan of? Who? Edith, hottest, hottest chick here. Edith is so Although lovely. Although her name is a turnoff. If we dated, I asked her if I could call her robot. It just sounds fresh. Edith is too old. Yeah. April is also a hottie patati. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of acid, are you on it? I'd call her robot. What? Ellen has a master's degree. <laughs> We're having fun. I mean, uh, are we recapping the show? Well, probably not, but you can go to Game of Roses for that. Here? We're going to do what we do, which is call Gary's late wife a fat ass. <laughs> you were saying? Uh, Leslie, sexy woman. Beauty within comes out. <clears throat> um, I, I, I don't know what that well, note is. Well, it's revealed that she also has a hearing aid. I believe that's what the beauty was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he whispers something in her ear, and the producers ask, what did he say? Yeah. And she says, well, that's between uh, it's between him and I. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you I have always the transcript. That, I always want to know that um, what uh, Tom Hanks was uh, 
talking about in Saving Private Ryan. Remember when Matt Damon's character asked him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you? What did she say? No. I'll keep that to myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the best parts of the movie. I oh, yeah. I just wanted to know. Yep. Because I like secrets. Yep. Well, I think the secrets are uh, revealed. I think Gary said, um, uh, oh, we've already done so much. And <laughs> I'm not sure if it's necessary to make some joke about how he, you know, likes. I'm, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, yeah. We'll save yeah. some for the next episode. I know what uh, what Tom Hanks said to Matt Damon. What did he say? He said, uh, you know, my men need, didn't need to die for you, you little piece of shit. Really? Yeah, something like that. That's what I would have said to him. That would have changed the whole movie. Yeah. So Gary, the next day, wakes up pretty excited about the things that are going on, and he walks into a, an empty house, a somber house, a quiet house. Until he goes into the backyard. As it is his birthday, the women have been corralled to surprise him. Susan is perfect for this, a.k.a. Kris Jenner. She is the buttercream of this cake. She is in a beautiful dress. Mm -hmm. And she says, I'm losing ground, so I need to go and sit down and chat with him. And chat she does. She says, I love to cook. I've been making piccata. And frying meatballs since mm. 6 o'clock this morning. Who doesn't like a little garlic? Who doesn't like a little peppers? <clears throat> Indianans, you are being a little bit too uh, Carmella here for Gary. I do not see Susan making it past week four. No, but you know who I do see it uh, making it past uh, week three is yeah. Sandra. Loves football. Yep. Cherie, look out. She also likes wine. Yeah. So Sandra is a beautiful woman i love sandra she's my fave mm-hmm. i'm gonna say sandra's my fave uh mine's uh the edith therapist. and Sa- edith and sandra and Teresa. i love those three they're front runners for me mm-hmm. so um the horn dog is natalie she's she's there they're grilling uh, hot dogs and she of course has to be lewd something we would never do she says something about his uh, his cock oh, of course you know uh one of the women say um how could he pick just one of us? We're all so much fun. And I completely agree. I don't know how he's going to make heads and, t- heads and tails of all of these wonderful women, but he's going to have to, and he's going to cry and cry and cry, and I, for one, cannot wait. Yes, that will be a common refrain. All right, so Joan and Gary sit in the top bunks. I think Joan, she lost her husband, too. Yeah. She claims also wanted her to find Oh, Patrick, guy. Patrick. You're moving too fast. We have to tell you, we have to Game of Roses this really quickly. Okay. Because what happens with faith is a cardinal rule that cannot be broken on the Bachelor franchise. And that is branding yourself of lacking the attention of the Bachelor. Oh, yes. Faith, who got the first impression, Rose, the night prior, is doing this thing that is just a surefire ticket out of the bachelor mansion and that is complain that you're not getting enough attention going up to the bachelor saying i feel less than i need it's it's not a good look it's it doesn't have a good batting average on this show you usually get shit canned if you bring this up yeah yeah you come off a little too desperate yeah especially listen i get week three week four doing this but one day after you get the first impression rose i mean faith I you're not a fan of you uh so yes we have a little top bunk chat with joan and again um love that name and again very dangerous yes uh well i believe she is the front runner dylan uh cut to uh gary gifts ellen with a picture frame of their wedding photo mm-hmm. uh, no 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 that was natalie i think oh Screw uh-uh. it up, man. See, that's why I need the goddamn Chirons, yeah. man. I'm drunk when I'm watching this. Yeah. No. Um, oh, no, this is Ellen. To remember yesterday and the moment, Gary has presented Ellen with a guess, uh, with a, uh, a gift. And Gary cracks a little bit. This is where you can see uh, something that I was a little worried about. Gary may be um, a violent monster um, because... He hands her the gift, and she says, Gary, it's your birthday. And he says, well, if it's my birthday, I can do what the fuck I want, can't I? You know, he Uh, fires up a little bit, and you're like, wow, okay. (laughs) The guy can fly off the handle, throw a glass of wine against the wall, and tell her 
to figure out how to remove the stains. But right now, it's all fine. Want to get to the uh, fire ceremony? What's that? Well, the rose ceremony at night. Am I moving too quick? How much we got left here? Um, no, you're not moving too quick. I mean, she says that any man that makes her feel this special is a man that she could possibly want to love. And that is a very non-committal thing to say. Yeah. I believe Joan said it. Uh, no, no, no. It was either Joan or Ellen. We, hey, listen. I need the Chirons. We need the Chirons. We need the fucking Chirons, okay? We got no idea who these people are. All right, let's get to the rose ceremony. All right, this is great. Minutes before the fire ceremony, April yeah. tells us uh, if he doesn't give her a, a rose tonight, she'll kill him. Yeah. Or just wait two years, and there'll be a set of t- set of stairs there. Just take him out that way. Yeah. Or wait for an owl to uh, to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, Chris Jenner, aka Susan, Kathy. No. Susan. Kathy is Bruce. Oh right. Uh, sorry, Caitlin. How fucking disgusting are we? <laughs> We're both disgusting. Why are we dead? Na- the worst thing that we've done the entire fucking episode is dead name Caitlyn Jenner. That's fucked up. I do mean that. I, I sound like I'm joking, but we'll refer to Kathy as Caitlyn Jenner moving forward. <laughs> like decent fucking allies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but Chris Jenner is in a mercury green sequence that I... I was sure was going to get her eliminated from the show. But Pat, tell us who does go home. Oh, who goes home or who stays? Who stays? Okay, Leslie. That's the one that uh, Prince wrote a song for. He penned it. It's called uh, Please Don't Let Me Get in an Elevator on Pills. One of his best hits. <laughs> yeah, how's it go? Uh, <laughs> Ow! Yeah. I'm dead. Uh, Joan, uh, Edith, yeah. Hottie Patati, Ellen. I can't get past the accent. Gross. Uh, Sandra, <laughs> what's the line on the Chiefs? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Chris Jenner, Bruce Jenner. Sandra's a degenerate gambler. Who goes home? Jeannie, who I don't even really remember, and this was tragic, Natasha. Yeah. I hated seeing Natasha go home. Hated seeing Natasha go. And when he hugged her and said, you know, Natasha, you, you're a great hugger, and that reminds me of my dead wife. I thought she was going to stay. But alas, she goes home. She's got too much spunk for Gary. Gary is so. uh, Gary is a saltine cracker of a human being. But this show, luckily, is not that. We are having such a good time with this. We can't thank you guys enough for listening. We apologize for really everything we, we said, said. T- t- today. I, I, every last syllable. Um, and the only thing we can do is vow next episode to try to be better. Will we fail? Yes. But tune in next week. Jump in the iTunes ratings and reviews. Leave five stars. Kind words. Join us on Patreon for the uncensored version of this show. And that is it for me. Everybody have a great weekend. I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Pat say goodbye. Later, dudes. Later, dudes.